Patricia Morsero has spent her career telling other people's stories. She's written for Vanity Fair, Vogue, and New York Magazine, among others. But now she's telling her story. In her memoir, Nine and a Half Narrow, My Life in Shoes, Patricia not only tells her story, but the story of a generation of women who've enjoyed a world of opportunity their mothers might never have had. Patricia joins us now on CT Style. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks. So give us the overview of Nine and a Half Narrow. I'm assuming that's your shoe size, right? It uh, absolutely <laughs> is. It used to be a nine, but then I got older and it grew a half an inch. But um, the story is about, um, I, I figured that shoes were really markers in terms of our lives That's and true. women remember so many things about their lives based on their shoes and also they remind us of who we've kind of loved and lost along the way so um, I thought shoes as everyone you know who's read Cinderella knows <laughs> is the perfect way to tell not only my story but really a whole story of a generation of women. Well if you think about it any sort of life moment you have you remember the outfit, you remember the shoes you, do. you had on. You remember the shoes most critically because where would you go without them? I mean, they symbolize the journey more than any other item of clothing. That's true. So is there a shoe history that plays into this or is it strictly yes, your story? Yes, it starts, uh, well, it starts with my own infatuation with Mary Jane's when I was younger <laughs> because uh, the daughter of a movie star wore them and I coveted those shoes in church and I think I thought by stepping into, and I did buy the same shoes, but I thought by buying those shoes I could step into her life. You could be the movie star. I could be the movie star <laughs> or the movie star's daughter, yes. Uh, so let's go back to the early days. Yes. You talk about confirmation wedgies that yes. you had. Well, you know, every, when you're 12, 13, uh, so many religions have different rites of passage, mm -hmm. and growing up Catholic, it was confirmation, and the girl, it was the first time we could wear a bit of a heel. Up until that point, the nuns, it was only flat. <laughs> but so this wedgie took on, you know, the, uh, uh, an importance for which, when you looked at it, you know, had uh, shouldn't have had any bearing on it. But, I mean, there was a run. We had... Reinhold shoe store on Main Street, and you know all the girls. We've got to get our wedgies. We've got to get our wedgies. So <laughs> couple extra inches. Yeah, right? it, was it was like big that deal. big. It was, but it was a major deal. The wedgies. Yeah. Now I have to ask you in the book. You talk about how Puma sneakers almost derailed the wedding. Yes. What, well, well, how? <laughs> yeah. Uh, y my husband used to work for Puma between college and business school, and on our first date, he showed up in a white Tyrolean sweater and red pumas. And I looked down <laughs> at his feet and I said, that's it. And he had a massive collection of the pumas because he got them at a discount. They were so popular too, I think, they right, in the 90s. They were popular. <laughs> they were popular, but I looked and I snuck into his closet and it was like he must have had every model going back <laughs> to the 1930s. And I was very worried that he would hog our closet space forever. That was a concern then, I it suppose, right? It was a right? big concern. All right, uh, let's move on now to your Annie Hall Oxfords. How does this play into I was life? dating uh, someone who um, looked very much like Woody Allen. And um, I kind of loved the whole menswear look of the 70s, and I kind of fashioned myself as a, a, a Diane Keaton. And I was starting my journalism career, and mm -hmm. I loved the whole Ralph Lauren menswear look. And Oxford's, I think, first of all, not only the comfort, but I sort of saw, you know, whether it was Diane Keaton or before her, Catherine Hepburn sort of striding strongly ahead in mm -hmm. those walk anywhere Oxford. So, so those were really my favorite shoes at the time and still are in many the go -to, respects. Would you say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you talk about your ostrich flats, which is kind of a sad, it's a sad story. Yes, um, my best girlfriend uh, who only shopped at sample sales and you know, she brought me into these uh, sample sales and I found these ostrich uh, flats and um, I loved them and she had um, a daughter and she subsequently died and I couldn't, I wore the shoes to her funeral and I could never wear them again so I gave right. them away to a consignment shop and I happened to check in and I saw an elderly woman with another elderly woman and she was trying them on and I said you should really buy them and I saw these two elderly friends go up to the oh, counter sure. to buy the shoes and I thought those shoes have a really good home.
Absolutely, it's a great story. And then uh, lastly, the New Balance sneakers. This is kind of your life uh, recently. Yes, yes. My mother um, was uh, 93, and um, I would say about eight months before she died, and she was an incredibly active woman and wanted my husband and I to take her to the New Balance factory outlet, <laughs> which was not far from where we lived. And um, she really thought that, you know, the New Balance would would restore the old balance and of course mm -hmm. it wouldn't but you know she wanted so much to believe uh, that it would and I think I came away from that recognizing that shoes women love shoes yes for the fashion aspect but they love them because they give them hope they that do, we right? can there still move ahead that there are still miles to go adventures to have people to meet Absolutely. Uh, I got to ask you, what do you have on today? I have on, <laughs> they're flat, but they're gladiator style. Gladiator style flats. I like them. Thank you. With Walk a gold heel. With them. Yep. I have not worn heels in quite some time, I, but I guess it's just part of my I, life uh, right yes. now. I and have those to look wear great. The boots. Those look great. <laughs> uh, you have an upcoming book signing. You're going to be in Connecticut for a while. I am, longer. and I'm excited about it. You're going to be at uh, RJ Julia's Thursday, April 23rd, 7 o'clock. That's mm -hmm. uh, tonight. Very yes. good. And where can we find your book? Um, you can find it at, uh, at RJ Julia, uh, bookstores, online, everywhere. Pretty much everywhere. Very good. Well, thank you so much for being here and oh, sharing thanks. your stories with fun. us. Thank you. All right.